Chuck Walenick, Marie and actor. And for 36 years in the classroom, I tried to get my students interested in history by using living history. And to that end, I would wear the garb for the time periods, and I would, you know, uh, play music for whatever time period we were covering, or whatever culture. I bring in artifacts for the kids to handle. Teacher talk is basically saying that's realia or manipulatives. And um, a kid-friendly museum. I'm not in the classroom anymore, and I have all this garb at home. Like there's a whole room full of it, and it doesn't even fit in the closets anymore or the drawers. And I have this passion for bringing the past alive, which is also why I'm involved in historical reenactment on the weekends. And I have this desire to preserve landmarks because they tend to go away. I also like to play history detective. And amateur anthropologist, amateur archaeologist. So what I'm engaged in now is a very pretentious, pompous sounding mission odyssey where I'm going to visit each of the sites in Alta California that had to do with the missions and that would be the missions themselves plus the Asistencias, those would be the spin-off missions, plus the Estancias, the ones that aren't paved over, those were the ranchos that were supposed to be raising food and livestock uh, for the missions. The Presidios, those were the fortifications designed to protect the Spanish interests, such as the missions. And whatever else just happens to fit into that framework, which means I could be basically exploring anything from the 18th or 19th century and try to fit it into this umbrella. Well, what I'm doing today is I'm heading back to the Asistencia Santa Margarita because I found too much stuff and I hope you'll stick with me. Santa Margarita was created as an Asistancia or chapel outpost for Mission San Luis Obispo. It was to raise crops and livestock to support the mission and also the Presidio at Monterey. When secularization happened in the 1840s, Joaquin Estrada purchased the rancho. So Santa Margarita, which has gone from being an assistencia to being secularized in like 1834 or 1835. It's a rancho, now belongs to Joaquin Estrada. Well, it will see action in the Mexican War. The Mexican War ended up affecting Alta California. Uh, the war was fought between 1846 and 1848, where the United States would end up taking a huge part of the American Southwest from Mexico. But before then, in December of 1846, John C. Fremont had a uh, volunteer group called the California Battalion that consisted of about 430 troops. And December 11th, he had already seized the mission at San Miguel Archangel. On his way to Mission San Luis Obispo, he stopped here, capturing a uh, Chumash Indian who was carrying a message at the explicit orders of Don Pico. The Indian was put to death. Fremont threatened to arrest everybody involved here at the Asistencia, or former Asistencia, now Rancho, 
and he would do this unless they swore loyalty, which they did. He then moved on to Mission San Luis Obispo, which is now an ex-mission at that point, and took that over, arrested Don Pico, and put him on trial for treason. Following the Mexican War, you can call this the American period, and when California became a part of the United States and made a state in 1850, California was divided up according to what the Americans wanted, and they turned the state into 27 counties. Uh, Rancho Santa Margarita became part of the new county of San Luis Obispo. So did ex-mission uh, San Miguel. And now everybody who owned land under Mexican land grants or Spanish land grants, they had to reapply in order to keep their land. And it was a lengthy, expensive process. It could take years. And not everybody was real happy with the results. In 1861, Estrada was forced to sell Rancho Santa Margarita to an American. Martin and Mary Murphy, who lived in San Jose, and the land would eventually pass to their uh, son, known as P.W. Murphy. And it would be that Murphy who expanded the family's land holdings to about 70,000 acres all over the state, including the adjacent Rancho Atascadero and Rancho Asuncion and Rancho Cojo. He ran his empire from his Rancho Santa Margarita headquarters. In addition to being a land baron, he was also a general in the California National Guard and he served in the California Assembly and in the State Senate for three terms. Uh, he's also going to be the one who puts wooden siding on the former Asistancia building and turns it into a barn. And the area is going to prosper largely because of him. Known as the Black Prince and Don Patricio due to his coal black hair, mustache, goatee, and affable, big-hearted personality, P.W. was highly esteemed for his hospitality, his kindness to all the vaqueros who worked for him, and his generosity to the local community. On February 23, 1870, Patrick married Mary Catherine O'Brien, and in order to create a home, he covered Joaquin Estrada's adobe house in Santa Margarita with white wooden clapboard siding, which is still visible. By the way, those used to be the Padres' quarters. In 1875, P.W.'s beloved wife and child died in childbirth in Santa Clara. He never remarried nor had any children. After P.W. Murphy acquired the rancho, this was still a very popular place to stop. And various stage lines came through here and made this a stopping place. Wells Fargo was one of them. A bit of then and now. You have the two-story structure that's behind the ranch house, which was actually made of adobe and then covered with wooden siding. That's the Wells Fargo office, since Wells Fargo used the ranch as an official stop. And P.W. Murphy is also going to be responsible for bringing the Southern Pacific Railway into the area. Now that's going to lead to an economic boom that's going to result in, in 1889, the town of Santa Margarita gets laid out. So what happened to that stone building that symbolizes the Asistencia? I'm going to take a look for it. I got faked out. I was all proud of myself. The uh, big patch of green with all the trees, there's some buildings in there and I saw that the walls were originally adobe but covered with wood. I thought I'd found the Asistencia. Those are the Padres quarters. This is the Asistencia itself, which is now 
basically a barn and the wood is covering the adobe walls or what's left. I was told there's a resident owl in here probably, but I'm free to poke around. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, so the modern barn added on. There's the original walls. Ooh, let's go see. Oh, very cool. Well, hi. I just got surprised. Yes, the owl and I surprised each other. I thought I would include that. This gives you an idea of the interior of the building, and you can see the windows and the doors as they originally were. All right, here's our count so far. 10 missions accomplished, 7 assistencias done, a few odd estancias, 2 presidios, several mission dams, and I'm out of here. I'm on the way to Mission San Miguel, number 11, that'll be 27 miles away and I hope you stick with me on my journey.